We call it space because we thought there was nothing out there. There is no empty sky with James Webb. That is what we have discovered. For decades, a deep and troubling contradiction has existed in the world of cosmology, suggesting our entire model of the universe might be fundamentally flawed. Astronomers have called it a tension, a problem, and more recently, a crisis. It is a cosmic mystery. The universe appears to be expanding at two different speeds at the same time, depending on how you look at it. Our most powerful telescopes have been studying this problem. And then came the James Webb Space Telescope. It was designed to give us the final answer and settle the debate. Everyone expected Webb to peer into the cosmos and deliver the verdict that would finally prove our model of reality was broken. Well, <laughs> the amazing telescope did not do that. The James Webb Telescope has revealed a worrying thing about the universe. It didn't give us a simple answer. Instead, it deepened the mystery and revealed that the truth about our universe is more complex and more exciting than we ever imagined. This is something no space channel has ever uncovered, and you're hearing it first. To begin, let's take a deeper look into this discovery and learn how the new Webb telescope discovery confirms a crisis in cosmology. To understand, we need to go back to the beginning, not just of the universe, but of how we learned to measure it. In 1929, Edwin Hubble provided the first observational evidence that our universe is expanding everywhere. From this discovery, scientists thought that if the universe is expanding, then this expansion must have started at some time in the past, which means that the universe must have a finite age. The speed of this expansion is described by a single, crucial number, the Hubble constant. For decades, figuring out the precise value of this constant has been one of the most important goals in all of science. This value is needed to calculate the age of the universe, estimate its evolution over billions of years, and understand the forces driving it. To find it, astronomers have adopted many methods. Currently, there are two gold standard methods for figuring out the Hubble constant, designed to measure the same thing from two different perspectives. The first method looks at the early universe. It involves pouring over tiny fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background, or CMB. This is an ancient relic of the universe's first light, produced just 380,000 years after the Big Bang. Between 2009 and 2013, astronomers mapped out this microwave fuzz using the European Space Agency's Planck satellite. By studying these tiny fluctuations, cosmologists can use our standard model of cosmology to predict how the universe should have expanded. This method gives us a very firm number for the Hubble constant, about 67.4 kilometers per second per megaparsec. For years, this was considered the definitive answer. But what happens when you try to measure the expansion rate directly? This brings us to the second method, which looks at the late universe, the one right here, right now. It is a direct observation of our cosmic neighborhood called the Cosmic Distance Ladder. The foundation of this ladder is a special type of star called a Cepheid variable. These stars pulsate with a rhythm that is directly related to their true brightness. By comparing this absolute brightness to their observed brightness, we can calculate how fast the universe is expanding. From there, astronomers use type 1a supernovae. These are stellar explosions that all detonate with almost the exact same brightness, making them phenomenal standard candles. By finding Cepheid variables in nearby galaxies that have also hosted a Type 1a supernova, we can calibrate the brightness of these supernovae. And because supernovae are so luminous, we can see them across immense distances. For years, the Hubble Space Telescope carried out this work. But this is where the mystery begins. According to these measurements, the universe's expansion rate is around 73 or 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec, an impossibly high value when compared to Planck's measurements. Hope you are still following up, because what we are to uncover ahead will blow your minds of. Initially, some scientists thought that the disparity could be a result of a measurement error. For a while, the margins of error in both measurements overlapped. But as our technology got better, our measurements got more precise. 
the error bars shrank and they stopped overlapping. By the late 2000s, the disagreement was statistically significant. It was no longer a discrepancy, it was a tension. This new study also suggests that we may be completely wrong about the current estimated age and nature of our universe. David Gross, a Nobel Prize winning astronomer said, we wouldn't call it a tension or a problem, but rather a crisis. This hinted that something might be missing from our standard model of cosmology. Perhaps there was a new ingredient in the universe we hadn't accounted for, a new particle, a new force, or maybe dark energy itself was changing over time. This crisis was seen as a chance to glimpse something entirely new in physics. But there was another possibility. What if one of the measurements was simply wrong? The cosmic microwave background was considered very reliable. So, suspicion fell on the cosmic distance ladder. Measuring distances with Cepheid stars is very difficult. Perhaps cosmic dust was dimming the starlight, or the light from Cepheids was being blended with other stars. All the hopes for new physics depended on whether the Hubble Space Telescope's measurements were truly accurate. There was only one way to find out. We needed a new telescope, one that could see through the dust with unprecedented clarity. We needed the James Webb Space Telescope. Now this is where everything starts. When JWST began its science operations, settling the Hubble tension was one of its highest priority missions. One side was the team led by Nobel laureate Adam Rees. His team would use Webb to reobserve the Cepheid variables with far greater precision than Hubble ever could. The other side was a team led by Wendy Friedman, who had pioneered another method using different stars called red giants. The expectation was clear. Webb would be the tiebreaker. It would either find errors in the Hubble data, bringing the local measurement down to 67 and resolving the crisis, or it would confirm Hubble's value of 73, proving the crisis was real. Recently, the first results from Adam Reese's team came in. They had used Webb to observe Cepheids, and its infrared vision cut through the cosmic dust that had affected Hubble. The images were breathtakingly sharp and the result was stunning. Webb's data confirmed the Hubble telescope's measurements. The measurements were right all along. The value remained high, around 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. For a moment, it seemed the case was closed. The universe was broken. The crisis was real. But then, Wendy Friedman's team released their own analysis. They used Webb to get new, high-precision data on their alternative standard candles, the tip of the red giant branch stars, and their results told a completely different story. Their calculation for the Hubble constant wasn't 73. It wasn't 67 either. It was 70.4. This is a new value, sitting almost perfectly in the middle of the two warring camps. With its small margin of error, Friedman's result is statistically consistent with the value from the early universe's cosmic microwave background. In a statement, Professor Friedman said, This new evidence is suggesting that our standard model of the universe is holding up. Suddenly, the urgent need for new physics seemed to fade. It appeared the crisis might be resolved without new physics. This scientific story, unfolding in real time, is what makes cosmology so fascinating. We're watching different teams use the same revolutionary instrument and come to different conclusions. If you want to keep following this incredible story and stay on top of the latest discoveries, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So, where does this leave us? JWST hasn't proven the universe is broken. It's proven that measuring the universe is one of the hardest things we have ever attempted. In other words, instead of a clean, two-way fight between the early universe and the late universe, we now have a conflict within the late universe measurements. We have different teams, using different stellar yardsticks with the same telescope, getting different answers. The debate is no longer about old physics versus new physics. It is now a forensic investigation into our own methods. Are Cepheid variables the gold standard? Or are red giant stars more reliable? Or could both have errors we have yet to uncover? The crisis in cosmology has not disappeared, but it has transformed. It's less of a spectacular problem and more of a deep, complex puzzle. Adam Reese's team maintains that their data still points to a higher value near 73, keeping the tension alive. Wendy Friedman's team argues that their method, now strengthened by Webb's precision, suggests the tension can be resolved without breaking our standard model. This is not a failure. This is the scientific process in action. We built the most powerful telescope in history to answer a simple question, and it gave us a much better, more complicated question. It forced us to re-examine our own tools and methods. The mystery of the Hubble constant is not over. It's more subtle and more challenging than ever before. But thanks to the James Webb Space Telescope, we are finally asking the right questions. We thought we were on the verge of a revolution in physics. It turns out we might first need a revolution in measurement. And as scientists continue to gather more data, the true expansion rate of our universe will eventually be revealed. The answer is out there waiting among the stars. And for a scientist, there is nothing more exciting than that.
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in our next video.